Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. This week, despite everything you may know about me, I'm painting some Dark Angels. I thought I'd share my method for painting Deathwing. It's not necessarily for everyone, but I hope you enjoy. Jumping straight in, we're going to use Zandri Dust from Citadel to spray these guys a nice tan colour. This is the perfect base coat for all that bone armour. For the next step, I'm going to use Yushabti Bone, also from Citadel, to create a nice zenithal with my airbrush from the top. If you don't have an airbrush, you can use a large dry brush and gently brush this on in a few layers to give a nice zenithal effect. With the armor base coated, we can start base coating everything else, starting with the green areas using Caliban Green. For this, I'm going to be doing a few of the armor motifs, most of the wing icons. There's a lot of green on regular Dark Angels, so we want to allude to that here with our Deathwing. The way I'm painting this guy is I'm doing all my base coats before I do any shading and any highlighting. So we'll canter through the base coats and talk you through what they're supposed to go on. Up next in the base coats is corn red for all the weapons castings and a few other areas as you can see in the top left. Both corn red and Caliban green probably want at least two thin coats on this kind of base coat. If you paint them onto black, usually they go on quite nicely, but this base coat's rather bright and these darker colours sometimes struggle to be opaque on the first go. I really like these red accents on the Deathwing, I think it really helps them stand out. Up next there are a bunch of areas that look a little bit like stone, so I'm using Mechanicus Standard Grey to fill all those in. Anyone who's been around the channel for a while knows that I'm not a massive fan of the Dark Angels and the Deathwing, and that's nothing to do with the lore or what they do in the stories, it's very much to do with the fact that Winter's SEO had a full Deathwing army during 9th edition and kept trying to beat me over the head with it, and it was very upsetting. All those 4-up saves and transhuman physiology. <laughs> So rest assured, as we moved on to the metallic areas, I'm literally only doing this because it's a commission. I don't think I could ever make myself do a Deathwing army, even though Terminators are really cool and this is a lovely scheme. To my surprise, the dark aluminium base coat here covered in one coat it ended up looking really nice. As always, I recommend you go pick up some of this dark aluminium. It's meant for airbrushes, but it's so easy to use. You've just got to be careful with the consistency. It's a little bit watery, so if you slap too much on, it's going to run onto areas you don't want it to be on. If you want to pick up any of the paints I'm using, there's an Element Games link down in the description. I don't usually bring that up, but we've got a moment, so there you go. There are a bunch of mechanical looking things over these terminators, like these little rivets here. You don't have to paint them if you don't want to. I just did because it's an easy way to break up the silhouette a bit more. Moving on to one of my favourite colours, I'm using Barrack Nar Burgundy for all the wax areas on the purity seals. And also, not on this model, but on a few of the other models, there were sword grips and so on that are going to be painted in the same colour. It's just a nice little accent colour that breaks things up. Moving on swiftly, as we near the end of the base coating stages, I'm going to use Pale Grey Blue from Vallejo, which is essentially a better version of Celestial Grey from Citadel, to base coat all the feathers. Fun fact for anyone newer to the hobby, Dark Angels used to be very Native American themed, and they don't really do that anymore, but it would be very interesting to see what they'd have gone with if they'd kept in that kind of style. But maybe they felt it was culturally insensitive, which is fair enough. I guess the uh, white scars didn't get the memo, but I love my white scars, so please don't change them. I'm now using Black Legion contrast paint for all the armor joints and seals and those rubberized cables. It's quite a stark contrast here, but once you start doing all your other layers, it'll look a lot better. Speaking of other layers, we're moving on to Wildwood, which is where we're going to do the belts, scabbards and pouches, but we're also going to start doing all the dark lining. It's what's called panel lining or recess shading. You can use Agrax Earthshade here, but I like the control and the opacity that comes with Wildwood. So I'm doing this carefully into all the recesses. If you don't want to do this stage, you can of course just use a wash. I just like the clean layers we've already made. For anyone who's a little bit nervous to try this or think it's time consuming, it's such a great way to learn brush control and I highly recommend it. It's helped me no end. Moving on to a wash using Seraphim Sepia, we're going to create a nice gradient for all the areas that are more in shadow. So those areas that are pointing slightly towards the ground or those areas that aren't covered in the Ushabti Bone Zenithal that we started with. 
Essentially, if you leave a band of Xandri dust between the Yushabti bone and then your Seraphim sepia layer, you'll be about in the right ballpark. Just keep it thin, don't put too much on, and gently sweep it towards the floor as that's where the darker shadows are going to be. It's a really nice effect and it'll be brought out more by this stage, the edge highlight stage. By using pale sand from Vallejo, which is a really bright, almost off-white, but still sandy colour, we can create a really nice, bright and sharp edge highlight. With the work we've already done using the Wildwood and then our Seraphim Sepia shade, this is going to make everything look really neat and tidy, even if your shade wasn't the neatest thing in the world. I always view the edge highlighting step as essentially boxing in the base coats and shading we've already done, and it does help things look really neat. Now using Evil Sun Scarlet to highlight all the red areas, it's worth noting that you don't have to edge highlight anything and you don't have to follow this guide to the letter. If this just gives you an idea of the colours to use while you paint in your own style, then that's perfect. The video has achieved what it's set out to do. We're now doing all the green areas using Warboss and then Scarsnet Green in gradually smaller edge highlights. This creates a really nice crispy Aquila on the chest and all those wing motifs. Moving back to another easy area, we're going to layer on some Screamer Pink onto the raised pieces of any of the grips and also the purity seals. Then straighten with Pink Horror for an even sharper highlight. Now time for our rather quick fire round, we're going to use the Shabti Bone to highlight up the purity seals, then go straight in with Pale Sand to make them a bit brighter than the regular armour. Moving on, using Agrax Urshade to shade these down. Usually I'd use Seraphim Sepia, but we've already used that on the armor. Before we move on to Dawnstone for all those stone areas. I'm using a layering method here, but a nice targeted dry brush could look really nice on stone as well. For a few quick shades, we're going to shade down the feathers with Brief Charger Grey, and then move on to Null Oil on all the metallics to make it look like it's been oiled. Going back to the feathers, we're going to add a few streaks and dashes here and there with Ulthu and Grey, just to add a bit of texture back. Now for our brightest red highlights, we're going to use Wild Rider Red on all the lenses and also the sharpest edges of our weapon cases. Now using a 50-50 mix of Rhinox Hide and Black Legion, which is a Darren Latham approved method, we're going to add some text to our purity seals. With that, the model is complete and we can move on to basing very quickly. The models were only lightly glued, so I snapped these off and added a bunch of rocks and texture paste. And after they dried, I sprayed them black and dry brushed, or overbrushed in this case, very heavily with Barracknar Burgundy. An overbrush is just a dry brush where you don't wipe off as much paint. Easy. Next up, we're mixing in Dawnstone bit by bit until we get to pure Dawnstone till we end up with this effect. And then all it is, is a matter of super gluing our guys back to the bases. So that's been a video on how I paint Deathwing. I hope you enjoyed this one. I've been Sam, see you next time.